Hi, my name is Kai Oda and I'm here with Sean Romeo to tell you how to create the proper log graph. The first step is to obtain a picture of your gel electroparesis results. The second step is to measure the distance from the bottom of the loading well to the center of your next DNA band in millimeters. Here's another artful shot of Sean measuring to the middle of the DNA band. Record your results in a spreadsheet. Notice the well on the left contains a DNA ladder. This means that we know each band corresponds to a certain number of base pairs. The DNA bands with the largest amount of base pairs will travel the slowest through the gel. Now, Sean is measuring the distance from the bottom of the well to the rest of the DNA bands, and he records all of his data in a nicely organized spreadsheet. Here I label the x-axis, which includes the distance in millimeters from the bottom of the loading well. Don't forget to label your axes, kids. Don't forget to add a descriptive title or Miss Stenger or Doc Points. If you feel the need to add decoration, do it. Notice the y-axis. The bottom half of the graph is labeled 1 to 10, each representing 100 base pairs, meaning that the bottom half of the graph is representative of 100 to 1,000 base pairs. Yes! <laughs> However, once you go past 1,000 base pairs, each increment represents another 1,000 base pairs, meaning that the top half of the graph represents 1,000 to 10,000 base pairs. Now Sean will plot our data points. He locates the number of millimeters that the band traveled, as well as the number of base pairs each band has. He will do this for all the bands that are present on our DNA ladder. Now, I will draw a smooth curve going through each of the data points on the graph. This will become our reference curve. Now that we have made our reference curve, we will measure the unknown samples. We measure from the bottom of the well to the center of the unknown band. The first unknown sample measured 3.3 millimeters. Locate this on the graph and draw a vertical line up until you reach the reference curve. Then, draw a horizontal line from the reference curve to the y-axis. Repeat this process for the second unknown DNA band. In this case, our DNA band traveled 5 millimeters, so I draw a line up from this point to the reference curve. Then, I draw a horizontal line from that point to the y-axis. The point where the horizontal line intersects with the y-axis tells you how many base pairs each fragment has. By comparing the number of base pairs for each fragment, you are able to tell if the two unknowns are indeed related. 